I am realizing this is a long narrative since I included elements I believed were significant, but I am probably being far too verbose. I and my wife got married lately. We were together for six years before marriage and engaged for three, delayed the wedding twice because of COVID. Her mental health has always been an issue, depression, ADHD, anxiety. But during the relationship, it feels like it's progressively been getting worse. She really battled with not seeing people during the height of the epidemic and worry from a family health issue. During this time, she lost her work but acquired a new one shortly after that was remote, but consequently more irregular with ours. I've always tried my best to be supportive, and she's remarked in the past that she believed I was the only person she's ever met that made her feel she could become who she wants to be. But I assume it ceased being true at some point. In few months after our wedding, she acquired COVID and also experienced extended symptoms for a time. It was incredibly demanding psychologically and physically. I suppose she was fully recovered after many months when she had COVID again and extended COVID symptoms again. We understood better how to control it, so it improved a little faster. But stress-wise, it all got too much. We only ate indoors on major events and wore masks in bars. We sat outside in the cold at any business that still offered outside seats. But after her second COVID recovery, she fell into a depression deeper than I had seen previously. She decided to take a leave from work, bring the depressed episode and leave. I fed her, handled all the domestic tasks, and worked full-time. She started improving. She attempted to do various things like taking lessons, but the only thing that she truly did regularly was yoga. Her sleep routine was highly erratic from the depression, so she would frequently struggle to get to sleep resulting in being up late and then sleeping and continuing to cycle with late sleep hours. This meant that she would take later yoga courses after supper and then have energy. She would claim she's going to go to a pub with Pauls from the class, or that she was going to sketch at some bar after, or that she needs to consider about treatment, etc. Usually, she would explain her plan was to be at the pub for an hour or two and then come home. But she would eventually say, just another two hours while I think about things and do it again until bars close. Then she returned home, sometimes inebriated, during rehabilitation from a depressive episode and extended COVID. I believe this was an undesirable coping technique, and it made her sleep much worse. It meant she'd sleep during the day and not receive vitamin D. And sleep quality is so critical for mental health as well. I would offer my opinions about this, but she's always been guarded about input from me. I journaled about this many times and talked to her about it, including asking her to go to her therapist about it. That throughout our couple's therapy sessions, we never really got to the difficulties I had with her communication. We just spoke about strategies I should take to ensure I don't trigger her from prior trauma and how we can both de-escalate. That's very useful stuff, of course. But this time, I think it was too much. Bring her time out. Males would talk to her. Eventually, she started making out with one of them. 
she gave him her other email, and they met up to make out, finally having intimacy. She also met two more guys who she stated she wanted something totally physical with, but she says she never had actual intercourse with them. She would send nasty texts to them. I noticed this when I took up her phone to charge it when she was resting. Plus, we have each other on Face ID and thumbprint, and when you start charging, the screen lights up and shows past alerts. I spotted a funny text, so I unlocked her phone and looked at it. I didn't think it was strange when I clicked on it and had practically zero suspicions until I saw what I was actually reading. I looked at it just with interest since we were so open otherwise. I thought, because I was horrified, but I also saw that this man sent emails to her alternate email that she doesn't have open by default. I sent myself the email so she couldn't refute anything later. She woke up from her slumber and we chatted and sobbed. I was so broken and numb, but her sorrow felt so complete. It's, and she confessed that she was dying to be desired and feel young and vibrant. She stated she never wanted to be with anybody else. She stated she screwed up mentally. And she's so sorry she's damaged our marriage too. I wanted to focus on this, her mental health and us, and I told her I wanted to be with her. The next day was terrible, but we seemed to get through it somehow. Then she had a therapy appointment. We spoke about it thereafter. Her therapist appeared to convince her. She's never done this before, therefore it isn't who she is. She was feeling imprisoned and needed attention. That's the vacation from job and independence is working for her mental health, which is true. It was an invasion of privacy the way I discovered it. Thus, and during this chat, all these things she spoke extremely defensively and with an attitude of blaming me for her conduct. I was not satisfied about the seeming absence of guilt. But to Bensies, over the following several days, she seemed to take responsibility, and I had hoped for our progress from this. But then, she wanted to think about what to do about her employment after an afternoon yoga practice. This was five days after I found out. After, she postponed when she'd return home again. And again, I urged her to take her time till she informed me she'd be home by two. By m I explained she can't do the identical thing she did when she cheated this student after cheating. How can she expect me to trust her? She had location sharing on her phone, and I went to the pub she was in. I told her this again in person. She stated she was staying till 2, and that's how it was. I departed, and she did return home later. I don't believe she cheated or anything. After couples therapy the day after, she had another therapist session a few hours later. After then, she's practically not been home. She has informed me semi-loose plans. Getting supper with a specific buddy, but not more than that. She claims she needs space. She'll come home late and sleep on the sofa until I wake up, then go sleep in her bed until it's time to leave the house again. Just on our couple's therapy session. I assume she's going to seek changes from me, so she doesn't feel stuck. I don't want her to feel confined. I want her to be well and have healthy coping strategies and to want to be with me. She still messages I love you to me, but she hasn't stated she loves me in a week.
I am so worried she wants to disconnect more totally, not only for my sake but hers. She's had suicidal ideas, and I just want her to be all right. I think she has projected her parents' relationship onto me and will regard whatever I do as controlling or unpleasant at this point. I assume her therapist has seen her talk about me this way, as well, and is promoting separation. I don't think her therapist is wrong based on what she's heard, but I think it's probable my wife is being selective about what she tells the therapist. Fifteen, for example, she didn't inform the therapist she was cheating on me for the two months it was happening. I would suppose that she also wasn't telling the therapist how often she was going out alone drinking. At our next couple's therapy session, I assume I'm going to be told she's moving out. And if I don't want that, I'll be controlling her again. I don't know how it's come to this. When the couple's therapist found out, she informed me. Just because she feels trapped does not mean that you are trapping her. But I am worried that my wife, who undoubtedly has felt I walk over her in chats, is choosing now to put her foot in the sand. It feels like the most unjust moment and decision. But I don't want to lose her and start my whole life again. I also don't want to submit to this and have her think she is correct to assume I want to dominate her. That would result in a life of her resenting me in her mind. I know I'm not blameless. We underwent couples therapy before this happened for a purpose. We have worked on it a lot and I'm getting better, but I'm not perfect. But above all things, I want her to be happy and healthy, and I believe she recognized that. So how can she assume that I want to dominate her instead of thinking she's coping unhealthily? I don't know how I came up with this text, but I am kind of numb right now writing it. I can't stress enough that I attempt in every conversation to comprehend, even if she believes I am simply trying to win, or if the topic gets heightened by my tone or her trauma. It's the number one item we've spoken about, and it stings so much that she actually believes I want to control her, even though what I am recommending. Not demanding is as modest as being at home, but midnight on weekdays and attempting to sleep well for her mental health. Wife strayed for two months. Felt I was being bossy because of ideas about what to do regarding COVID and depression. It's probable she's going to want space and to be treated differently. I am caught between not wanting to lose her and feeling like it is entirely unfair to focus on how I need to be better, rather than her mental health and our communication. I'm going to offer an update and then answer to some frequent criticism I heard. After visiting the couple's therapist again, the couple's therapist and my therapist firmly thought my wife likely had bipolar disorder, one or two unknown. Some family also suspected it. Over the last two weeks, we've had a couple cycles in which she comes back to me weeping, apologizing, claiming she doesn't want anybody except me, all the things I want to hear. We'll speak about what our future may look like, whether we require a change of location or some type of reset. We make up even intimacy. This type of absolution for her seemed to relax her, but then she seems to grow impatient again and depart for greater lengths of time. 
likes again with risky activities, she's claimed to continue cheating throughout these periods as well. I am worried about that since she's come back from wherever she's gone at like 6 a.m. and slept for 14, 15, sometimes even 19 hours. It feels pretty traditional bipolar conduct. Talking to my therapist, I've come to realize how improbable it is that things will end out ah. I love this person, and as much as I want the best for her, it is not assured that I am truly helping. Not because I'm not doing everything I can, but because any change for her needs to be internal. And statistically, bipolar takes a while to treat. And even if it is treated very successfully, we go back to having a relationship in which she was so insecure about whether she was good enough for me, about her own intelligence, and about PC confrontation, that it'll be hard to think we'll make it regardless. So I've basically made the internal decision that I'll be seeking legal separation, basically divorced with split money, but she can keep on my health insurance. My therapist has also indicated that I do display certain habits for control to reduce anxiety, so some uncertainty will be helpful to learn to live with it. So I think it'll be a win-win for my mental condition, my marriage, and my future. I'm basically going to arrange this all, and when I think my wife is in a stable place, I'll ask for separation. She'd already packed her belongings, preparing to move out anyhow, so I think it can be reasonably easy. I'm planning to do some solo travels and invite some buddies to organize a separate vacation with me as well. I've also been reaching out to many old friends and re-establishing my old community. And it's made me sad that I lost contact with so many fantastic people and so pleased that I've been able to get them back in my life. Heck for the feedback, many of you were right that she continued to cheat. His wife, Ten, expressed what I needed to hear. I can't tell you how pleased I am of being compassionate while prioritizing my well-being. There were others as well, and I am delighted you took the time. Otherwise well-being. Otherwise everyone claiming I don't have respect for myself or that I don't have self-esteem is simply inaccurate and frequently not very hopeful. Be for some, it would be a wake-up call, but I can't tell you how much it didn't seem beneficial at all. I actually have amazing resilience. I lost a parent early in life and made it through childhood poverty and self-esteem. And I am personally immensely proud of myself that I can consider what is best for other people even when I suffer. I do not struggle with sticking up for myself ever. I wrote that a week after I found out. I also want to caution against the customary chorus of calling cheating partners every disparaging name in the book. Many deserve it, of course, but reality is typically not so black and white. And while I don't justify her behavior, my wife is not as many of you characterize her. People have complexity. She may lie to me and feel sorrow. She can feel dominated without my being domineering. She can experience trauma and extend it to me, but that doesn't imply I'm accountable for it. Not all lying is gaslighting. She may be compassionate to others and not to me. I'm not apologizing for her acts. She will experience the repercussions for them. Thank you for listening to this story to the end, and if you like it, 
please support us with a like as well as subscribe to our channel. Write in the comments what you think about the story.